Okay, so we need to work out the equilibrium concentrations of the reactants and products in order to put the numbers in and get a value for Kc. But we haven't been given all the equilibrium concentrations. We know there's four molar hydrogen and there's three molar iodine. Both of those are diatomic. We know it's equilibrium. And that makes hydrogen iodide. And to balance it, we'll put a two just there. So now we're going to draw a grid underneath and make the so-called ice table. I, C, and E. So I stands for the initial concentration of the reactants and products. C is the change in concentration. And E, well, that's the one we want. That's the equilibrium concentration. We're going to put that into, the, into Kc. So I've got four molar initially for hydrogen and three molar initially for iodine. And I don't know how much for hydrogen and iodide, so I'm going to assume zero. But hydrogen iodide at the end is 2 molar. So the change from 0 at the beginning to 2, that goes up by 2. So consequently, the others have to go down by 1. Because the ratio of the coefficients at the top is, is 1 to 1 to 2. And that has to be mirrored in the middle line. So filling in the others, 4 changed by minus 1 gives me 3. 3 changed by minus 1 gives me 2. I have my three values at the bottom. Pop them into Kc, gives me 0.66 recurring. Let's try and work out why that's unitless, because at the top we have molar squared, and at the bottom we have molar times molar, and that all cancels out. So that has no units. Okay, so let's try another one with a fairly obvious trick, but a trick they'll always play on you. So this has no initial concentrations, and so you can't do this unless you see the little trick, which is the 20 moles of ammonia is in two decimeters cubed. So, you know, you can just do concentration is moles over volume, and that will give you the initial concentration of ammonia. Ah, it's not so bad then. So let me do my ice table, initial change and equilibrium concentrations, and let's put the data in. So first of all, my concentration at the beginning for Ammonia is 10 molar, and at the end, it's 2 molar. Well, equilibrium has no end, but at equilibrium, it's 2 molar. There's nothing about nitrogen or hydrogen, so I'm going to put zeros in to those boxes initially. So you can see the ammonia has gone from 10 to 2. It's gone down by 8. Now, this change line here has to mirror the coefficients in the equation at the top there. So that's going to go up by 4 for nitrogen, and that's going to go up by 12 for hydrogen. Now, if a change uh, of 8 is really 2, then that follows along. And so now finally, the nitrogen goes from 0 to 4, that gives me 4 equilibrium, and hydrogen goes from 0 to 12, because it's gone up by 12. Now remember, the concentrations that I need are the equilibrium ones at the bottom. So Kc is the products raised to their coefficients, divided by the reactants raised to their coefficients. And using the equilibrium line at the bottom, it is the equilibrium constant after all, I'll put the numbers in, and that gives me 5.79 times 10 to the minus 4. Ooh, fix that 4. So let's have a look at the units. Looking at Kc, you can see that it's a concentration squared over concentration times concentration cubed, which gives me concentration to the minus 2. Now that's acceptable to give the IB molar to the minus 2, but they're only ever going to put in their papers uh, mole to the minus 2, decimeters to the 6. Yuck! But I wonder what a decimeter to the 6 is, a 6-dimensional decimeter. It doesn't make much sense to me.